If you were a mid-level enforcer for the South Korean Mafia, then the Hyundai Genesis Saloon is a company car you could really aspire to. It's a big, fat, rear-wheel drive hunk of luxury that you can see from space. Of course, nature abhors a vacuum, and let's face it, there's about to be one. Can you guess what I'm talking about? Oh, hello. You're early. Thanks for joining me out here in the armpit of the universe that we Australians call Lithgow. Lithgow essentially does for culture what Boy George did for music in 1982. So this does seem something of a non-sequitorial location to bring Hyundai's most spacious, luxurious, expensive and irrelevant vehicle. But I assure you, we are out here baking in the hot Aussie sun for a reason. And it's just over here. This is all that remains of Australia's very first blast furnace. At the turn of the 20th century, 116 years ago, Lithgow became ground zero for the Australian steel industry. Today, of course, things are very different. We export vast quantities of the raw materials. In September 2016, $4.6 billion worth of iron ore and related concentrates left our shores. It creates vast wealth for this nation, it employs thousands of Australians, and it goes to places like this. This is the Hyundai Steelworks in Danjin, South Korea. It's where Australian iron ore gets turned into the flat steel sheet called hard coil. That's the stuff you see pressed, welded, and which ultimately becomes the structure on which the cars are built. If you're looking for Australia's contribution to global car making, this is it. When I visited this place in 2010 to produce a documentary for Channel 7 on Australian resources, we stood inside a giant geodesic dome designed to hold iron ore. It's big enough to park two Boeing 747s inside. This is how production manager Phil Koo described Australian iron ore. So more than good is could be a diamond. It could be a diamond. Yeah, it could it's, be a diamond. It's that important to your production. That's correct, sir. We depend on over 60% of resources from Australia. Without Australia's cooperation, you couldn't produce as many cars. It is unthinkable. You can examine a car like the Genesis a thousand different ways and not see any local content. But it's there. It actually is. It's deep inside this car's DNA. Just over there, about 60 k's, is another great Aussie icon. And that's where we'll find the next clue in this puzzle about nature and vacuums and how Genesis might not ultimately be irrelevant in Australia after all. This is the world-renowned Mount Panorama Race Circuit. Growing up, I spent every long weekend in October glued to the box watching the great race live. Then later, as a journo, I was lucky enough one day to ride a hot lap with Mark Scaife in a V8 supercar around this amazing circuit. It's brain-bendingly fast, insanely blind, and the top of the mountain is a total test of driver commitment there has never been a better battlefield for two great automotive brands to duke it out. That's how things stood for decades. And then the world turned on a sixpence and that's all over. Let's go for a lap. Growing up in Australia, motor racing at Bathurst is almost a religion, an endurance racing mecca. Mount Panorama has been a racetrack for 78 years. Hell Corner, the Cutting, Forest's Elbow and the 290 k an hour Conrod Strait. A speed record that stood for 32 years. 16 competitors have died here. 
And for half a century, this circuit has been a metaphor for the main motoring argument across Middle Australia and the battle waged every day on showroom floors. Holden versus Ford. This place, more than any other, is where Holden and Ford's iconography got stamped into the Australian motoring psyche. It's an amazing circuit, you know, steeped in history if you're an Aussie car nut. That was a fair bit more sedate than my hot lap with Mark Scaife, but I reckon I just set the Hyundai Genesis Mount Panorama lap record. And I always knew my life would amount to something if I just tried for long enough. Back to you, fat man. That was Chrome Dome, reminiscing first from the set of Deliverance 2, squeal like a pig in 3D, and then from Australia's mini-me, Nürburgring. Could you hear the banjo playing in the background near the old steelworks? I know I could. I think it was definitely, almost certainly, the four-string. A hillbilly classic. Did it make you want to squeal like a pig? Yeah, me too. The point of that package is context. How does Genesis fit in, in Australia? Because it certainly seems like a fish out of water, right? I mean, if you've got 60 to 80 grand to spend, do you even buy a car from Hyundai? People don't buy such big cars anymore, right? At least not in significant numbers. It's become a real niche thing. So I've seen dozens of reporters and reviewers compare Genesis with the Mercedes-Benz E-Class which I guess is an interesting intellectual exercise, but it tells you a lot about reviewers and how they never actually buy their own cars. Nobody shops an E-Class against a Genesis. It just doesn't happen. I mean, here in Australia, there are some small number of car buyers, hire car drivers and people who just really like that big, fat, long wheelbase, rear wheel drive limo thing. I get that. And those people currently buy the Holden Caprice. And there's going to be about 1,000 Holden Caprice customers this year. So it really is a niche thing. But here's the problem. If you operate a factory and it only makes 1,000 Caprices every year, this is a Dr. Kevorkian production problem. It just is. The fat lady is on in five. The factory is closing. It's a done deal. 12 months time, no more locally made Holdens. This is absolutely and fundamentally a betrayal of the Australian taxpayer by Holden, also known as General Motors. If there is a spectrum of ethical car maker conduct, this closure is off the chart and not in a good way. Here's Genesis, currently selling about 500 units a year. No economy of scale equation imposed by the factory to be concerned about, and the imminent demise of Caprice is an opportunity for Hyundai to triple Genesis sales in Australia, because those Caprice buyers will still want a sub 100,000 buck big fat rear drive limo, and Genesis is suddenly gonna be the only game in town. The 60 to 80,000 buck question is, how well will Genesis replace Caprice in your driveway? I guess the elephant in the room there is the engine. Genesis has a refined powertrain, but it's not the Caprice's 6.2 V8, right? What it is, however, is 60% more potent than a base model Benz E200, which costs 30 grand more. Genesis will haul your ass to 100 k's an hour in six and a half seconds. It's got a higher power to weight ratio than most cars. Performance is beyond adequate and refinement is excellent. Suspension tune is developed locally for Australia and it's really good on our globally acknowledged totally shit roads. In the week I had it, I drove Genesis about 500 k's in one day from Sydney to Bathurst and back on all kinds of back roads and highways. Genesis just ate that up. It's got the whole grace, space and pace thing going on. As long as you don't push it harder than about 8.5 out of 10. And if you do, it just feels like a big heavy car that you're abusing. I only abused it a little bit. It's not that much fun to abuse. And some cars are very fun to abuse. This isn't one of them. In a car like this, getting the suspension tune balance right, that's really difficult because you've got two conflicting imperatives. What you need to achieve is driver engagement, so the feedback has to be there. 
but you can't put a dent in NVH and refinement because that luxury feel is so critical to this car. There's a wizard named David Potter who does these unique suspension setups for Hyundai in Australia. And whatever they pay him, he's worth more money. Ditto his apprentice, Andrew Tuatahi, David Potter's Harry Potter, in a manner of speaking. They both did a great job because that's harder with Genesis than tuning a performance car. Genesis returned just over 11 litres per 100 k's to Bathurst and back, and that's pretty impressive fuel consumption for a car that big. I didn't need a chiropractor at the end of the day. Also good. It's very comfortable. It rides on the same long wheelbase as the Holden Caprice too, just over three metres. So I'm driving on all these back roads and over the Bells line of road too. Lithgow, and I'm wondering about the 6.2 litre V8 Experion in Caprice, right? So how much is that going to be useful and how much of that is just bragging rights? Where would you actually use the performance potential of that V8? The authorities in Australia have so fucked our roads. You've, you've got roads that would be beautifully engaging and flowing at 100 k's, 110 an hour, and you are limited to 80. And they prosecute the limit like religious friggin' zealots. It's like driving on fucking Valium. Not that I've tried that. In the context of driving in contemporary over-regulated Australia, Genesis is beyond adequate, and the radar-based adaptive cruise control is bang on accurate. It's a great way to preserve your licence. It does a fantastic job reining in your speed, even on steep downhill sections where some cruise controls just run away on you. What you also get is extreme refinement and affordable luxury. If you buy a Genesis, and if you use Hyundai's finance, there's a buyback guarantee that hedges against depreciation, which might otherwise constitute this car's biggest critical ownership drawback. You also get servicing thrown in for the first five years or 75,000 Ks. So the cost of ownership is going to be pretty low. The equipment level, very impressive. Three grades, but it's got everything. So I'm not going to bore you right now with that exhaustive list. It'll be in the blog post. Genesis is also supremely safe, and I don't use the S word very much. It seems justified though, because Genesis scored the highest safety score in ANCAP history against the independently tested protocols. So not all that much scope for improvement there. You could cover up the badges hypothetically and fool a lot of people that the country of origin of this car was a fair bit further north and a lot further west. Genesis is always going to be a niche product, right? But that niche is about to get a lot bigger over the next 12 months because of the imminent death of the Holden factory. The broader context is that the Australia I grew up in, in which you were either a Holden kid or a Ford kid, that Australia is already dead. The second law of thermodynamics killed it. That's a science joke. I only point this out because this is Australia and imbeciles are everywhere. Ford and Holden have already stepped off the podium and the biggest challenge they face is poor product quality and growing cultural irrelevance. They are no longer icon brands. Mazda and Hyundai might not be icons, but they have already replaced Ford and Holden on the podium in the minds of a great many Australian new car buyers. Don't take my word for that. This is what the sales data demonstrates unequivocally. And if your parents or their parents immigrated here from elsewhere, that Ford versus Holden cultural clash has never been that relevant to you anyway. You have to look at this like a game of chess, the pieces and where they are disposed on the board strategically. And science geek factoid number two, there are more potential moves on a chessboard than there are elementary particles in the universe. It's true, there are. The shift in our cultural relationship to cars in general, the objective global value of our resources and the jobs that creates here, the affordable luxury, the customer support, the biggish engine, the price, the rear drive, you know, Genesis is sufficiently big and fat. All of a sudden, 
Genesis is looking like a natural successor, albeit one that's swimming against the jingoistic tide if you look at history with those rose-coloured glasses strapped to your head. I'm expecting more than the usual dose of YouTube hate over this report, plus the conventional false allegations of being paid off. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> if, however, you are sane and rational and you want a new car and you want to save thousands on that here in Australia, I'd be very pleased to help you out. That's what I do, and it's not a scam. Hit me up via the website, subscribe for regular updates, and feel free to like this video or spew unadulterated hate in the comments feed. Something I never find disappointing. But I detest indifference. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.